Well, a lot of times we talk about um, who owns the data, and that's always uh, an interesting scope of it. So what, what is RevOps to you? What do you think RevOps role should be to the CMO, the CRO, and even the CFO? And who owns the data or the single view of the data in the company you think it'd be to be? Well, if you're, if you're pursuing a single view of the data, then there isn't inherently sort of a primary owner. Like it's the company owns the data. And if you're looking at it between sales, marketing, customer success, finance, it's, 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 it's a collective ownership. I mean, so there isn't really, I don't know if this is the this sort of the, like the communist answer, but like, you know, I'm not worried about which department owns it. I'm worried about making sure that there's consistency and value in that con in that data across systems. Now, um, there are plenty of marketing teams that have increasingly taken over ownership of revenue operations, right? And said, listen, we're, we're marketing, we're the voice of the customer, the, the data is about the customer, and therefore we are going to help manage that. I, I see the best places for RevOps to live are either within marketing or in sometimes within finance, right? To have RevOps report up to the CFO to make sure that data is, is, is optimized can be useful. Um, if it's owned in sales, it, it's, it's just not a function sales should be distracted with. If it's owned in IT, unfortunately, it tends not to follow business rules uh, and tends to be more about the reports and more about the data and less about what the data is doing. So I think uh, revenue ops in marketing, revenue ops in finance tend to be two of the best organizational um, solutions. Love it. Have you, have you seen revenue ops becoming this insight engine and giving you recommendations and takeaways already about what the go-to-market machine should be doing? Or is it mainly still tasked, like try to tie all the data together, yeah. try to build reports? Where, where is it at in maturity? Yeah, I love that question. And I, and I think that there's, I mean, there's obviously many companies at different levels of that maturity curve. Um, I would say too many companies still treat the data just as facts in and of themselves. Like here's the data, here's the numbers. And if I can have them in an organized way, and if I can have them in clean reports, and if I can make it so you can access the data right away, then I'm good. But data is meant to be interpreted, right? I mean, if you look at a if you look at a report or a dashboard, you should answer three questions: like, what does it say? What does it mean? And now, what do I do? Right. So, in too many reports and too many RevOps systems, it's all, it's just about like, here's what it says. Here's what it says, and then you move on. Like, no, no. Depending on what it says, is that good? Is that bad? What does that imply? What does it mean to us based on what that says? And what are we going to do about it? Sometimes you look at a report, you're like, okay, green light, everything's good what we do next is just keep doing what we're doing. I want to identify the data and the trends and reports that tell me I should be doing something differently, telling me I should do something new, telling me that I should stop doing something that's not working. And so making that data actionable and creating an environment, no matter where that data sits and no matter who's managing it, that you're actually taking action proactively, that you're doing reviews with next steps proactively, um, that's where it's at. Yeah, if I had a dollar for every time I go to a sync or interlock meeting, where 45 minutes is just spent on understanding the data and agreeing methodology of what this data means, it is, in order to have a proper interlock and agreement between the functions, it's, why don't we first of all define what data we're looking at? What do these KPIs mean to us? Yep. And then let's start really starting to understand what we should be doing next. It's so much time is spent on just deciphering what the data means. Do you see that as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, and it's a, it's it's... It takes, um, you, you have to invest the time to do that. You have to invest, you know, you have to have people that know that that's part of the job and you also have to invest part of their time to actually do that. And, and unfortunately, like, you know, there isn't always a direct output from that effort. Sometimes you look at the data and you don't come up with a good idea. You don't come up with a good insight. So there's a level of fishing that you're doing there and you, but you have to kind of, it's kind of a funny week to say this, but you have to trust the process. Right. You have to trust that, you know, the process of looking at the data sometimes is going to is going to be more fruitful than other times. Sometimes you're not going to have as much insight out of it. But I think that's a, that's a, the long term play of pulling insights out of that data is really what's most important. Yeah. Leading indicators, the nagging indicators, at least you agree on a set of KPIs exactly. and aligned to it.